Hello, this is Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick, and I'm talking with Vanessa Little, member of the Technical Steering Committee, OSM, and also Director, Solutions Architecture, at VMware. So you've very much got two hats I certainly for this do. interview, if not more, but we'll, we'll stick with the two, Vanessa. Good to see you again, and thanks for coming in. Let's start with a nice easy one. What is zero-touch automation? So at this conference, zero-touch automation implies being able to deploy and manage networks in an automated fashion to remove the level of human intervention required. Sh snappy answer, but you said at this conference. So I take it there's another take on what zero-touch automation is. Yeah, this conference really focuses on zero-touch automation for 5G and how Etsy's really driving that and developed a community around it. Um, the broader scope of that really could be anything to do with automated networks and infrastructure. So here at this conference, we're really zeroing in on the telecom aspect and the 5G aspect of network automation, but the broader scope is, is much bigger than that. The vendor community is the vendor community, and the vendor community exists to sell things to CSPs, uh, to sell solutions to CSPs, to sell what it can to CSPs and service providers in general. What is the best thing you think that the vendor community can do to help the CSPs on this continuing transformational journey? So the bottom line is we need to make it easy to consume the products that we're selling. And there's two ways that we can do that. One, the products have to be very robust, very fully featured. They need to achieve the goals that the CSPs are setting out to do uh, programmatically, and the software needs to have the features that are, that are needed to do that. The second is that they need to help those CSPs adopt those new products. So there's huge impacts to operations huge impacts to, to rolling things out, huge impacts even to EBITDA. So it's the responsibility of the vendors to communicate that and assist the, the CSPs in adopting them, not just sending them a PO for a bunch of hardware or software. How will automation help CSPs provide their customers with the best possible quality of experience? So as networks get more and more complex, the idea of human intervention to repair damaged systems is no longer viable. So when you're looking at five nines type SLAs that's been prevalent in telcos for years, being able to do that in these complex infrastructures needs automation. You need to be able to have networks that can heal themselves, things that can deploy the services as needed, scale them out, scale them back in, et cetera, et cetera. Waiting for human intervention is not feasible anymore. So this type of zero touch automation makes that possible. So how are virtualization and automation allowing you to offer your customers innovative services? That's the first point. And the second point, perhaps more to the point, is what types of services are they buying and taking up right now? So the greatest part about these types of platforms is that they're very flexible. And that really goes hand in hand with innovation. So you can deploy a service, you can test it out, you can trial it very simply, very inexpensively, and you can fail fast, as much as that term gets overused in the industry. Um, that's really what these platforms offer the CSPs, is that you can try a new platform. If it doesn't work out, you can tweak it, you can reshape it, and it's no longer a big operation like it used to be. You can have an innovative new service to market within a matter of weeks or days, as opposed to months to years, as it was in the past. Um, so the second part of your question, what are we selling people? Well, we as VMware, we sell them the platform. That makes it possible. Um, being able to have a flexible platform that's completely virtualized makes this type of thing possible. And so whether it's, it's for NFV or for IoT um, or those other types of hand-in-hand of -hand type technologies, the platform is really the same kind of thing. Uh, and so we offer the, the stable platform, the flexible platform that makes all of these types of services you put on top possible. Thank you. We mentioned 5G briefly just now, and uh, as a journalist, I see that the hype cycle is just about it. It's utter, uttermost at the moment because, my word, there's a lot of, be, like, lot of hype out there about 5G. But it seems that we might actually be getting towards a point where there will be some real, real life on the ground, in the air applications and services. And let's hope there will be. But how important is automation when it comes to preparing for proper 5G? Oh, it's not only important, it's essential. It's completely necessary. When you look at how complex 5G networks are and how many different components there are that you're now deploying, it's not feasible to do it as a one-off every time you want to deploy these things. You need to be able to automate it, streamline it, have it be repeatable, 
um, robust and, and even self-healing to a certain point in order to achieve these types of architectures. We talked about the upside and the great potential there is for transformation, automation and so on, but there's a downside as well, a potential downside, which is the operation and cultural changes and challenges that come to CSP as a direct result of that. In other words, human beings losing jobs in some cases. What do you think are those operational cultural challenges when it comes to automating key functions in the network? So when you look at automating key functions, what we're doing is we're effectively shifting the technology that they're using. And so the people that we're managing that technology either have to be retrained or repurposed elsewhere if they're no longer required. Um, that's a huge cultural shift in, in itself. So not only do you have to deploy this new technology, you have to enable your team on it, you have to make sure you have the correct team that's properly skilled to maintain that new service, those new features. Um, and then you need to make sure that you're still holding your company together. Because if you announce this massive change, we're gonna rebuild the entire network, it's all gonna be great, people are gonna panic. And you can't have that happen to your company. You're gonna, you, you'd have huge amounts of attrition that aren't necessarily necessary. It's not really true that people are going to lose a lot of jobs. I personally believe that some people will be repurposed, some people will be retrained and upgraded, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be unemployed. Great interview, snappy answers. I enjoyed it very much. Vanessa Little, thank you. Thank you.